Good morning. Welcome back to All Right, What's Next? So, today I am going to do a video that many of you are probably going to freaking go, holy shit, finally someone is going to address this problem that I've had for a long time and have no real solution on what to do with it. All of you probably have a great Gargant for Warhammer 40k sitting on the shelf and it's a great big unwieldy difficult to move model to take off the shelf put on the game table whatever it's fragile it's big and you don't want to move it well i'm going to show you how to freaking make this thing more mobile and safe to move around where you can possibly even put it in your car you might want somebody to sit in the back seat with it and hold on to it so it don't fucking fly off of it we're going to make a base for my orc great gargant model uh if you've watched any of my videos before you might have seen it sitting over on the freaking desk and wondering it's like, how come he doesn't have a base for it? Well, now we're going to make a base for it. Uh, I don't know what your great Gargant models look like that you have on your shelf, but this one is mine. Uh, I have been working on this literally for 12 years. Now, not constantly, nonstop for 12 years, but I started it approximately 12 years ago. Uh, and I was really hardcore into working on it for a, quite a while. But then I bought an acreage, and there's just, I always have other things going on, and I've got 9,000 other fucking hobbies going on, and this thing ended up just sitting on my, uh, my desk collecting dust because there's no easy way to move it around. Uh, I think in the last nine years, I probably put a grand total of about 10 hours in on building this thing. Everything is done on it except for the arms and the head. I've, you know, the torso is all done. I got my freaking flamer done. The guard tower, I guess, could stand. It needs some more detail. I got to put some pop rivets and shit in there. But I'm not going to finish this model. Uh, I got as far as I want to get it. After we make this base, so my uh, Gargant is mobile. It's being shipped off to my brother. He's going to finish the detailing work on it. <laughs> and then uh, he's going to do the paint job on it. And then we're going to sell it. Hopefully. But... Let's go over some of the features on my Gargant that might be different than your Gargant. Uh, mine's made completely out of plywood, balsa wood, brass, PVC, old RC car freaking parts. Uh, there's a lot of mobility to it. The torso turns. And the arms. You got the, the close combat weapon with an actual blade that I bought at Menards for a, uh, for a little mini, mini saw. The heavy weapon over here, pivots. Uh, here, let me, we got the, what is it? I think it's a Hopsplat cannon, I think is what's on here. No, we have some actual 40K pieces molded into it. Uh, probably a couple of thousand tiny little pieces of uh, PVC rod. Let me, I got some of that fucking. Ah, yep, okay. Polystyrene rod, I should say. This stuff right there. Uh, what is it? Two millimeter freaking rod, 18 inches, 12 inches long, whatever. Uh, and you sit there and you cut up little tiny, tiny pieces. And you take a stick pen and super glue, glue it onto the fucking model. It is like the absolutely the poster of what tedious means. It's a horrible process. This took fucking hours. Let's uh, let's spin this guy around and have a look at the the back end of it. Now back here, gotta have a fuel source. So I got the Heineken keg can back here with some uh, nice PVC piping coming out of it, some chains. Uh, that's just a jeweler's chain you can get at Walmart over in the freaking jewelry aisle, and it looks like real fucking log chain, especially once you paint it up. Holding up the PVC pipe, make it look better. I got a bunch of it down here. Let's see if I can zoom. My camera don't zoom for shit. Here. Got all kinds of chains hanging down here. That is to help hide the wooden block down here that actually supports the model because these feet are the weak link and are the primary reason why we got to make the base for this. Yours might be different. Your, uh, your feet might be good and strong. Now, up here, we got to have exhaust pipes. You know, this thing's got to freaking, got to breathe. 
Got some, uh, this is, uh, what was it, quarter inch brake, uh, hard brake lines for, for cars. Bought it at fucking O'Reilly's. Uh, and then I just got blocks of wood, drilled blocks of wood, wrapped it in fucking copper, drilled holes in it. Uh, we got, you know, on the, the, uh, the flamethrower and the cells up, uh, fuel cells up here, they're, uh, they're just, uh, CO2 freaking cylinders. It's, uh, I think this is an engine out of the back of a, of a, of a, fuck the tank for freaking Space Marines. Land Raider. Yeah, that's a part off of a fucking Land Raider. Uh, these are shocks from RC cars. The, uh, the arm over here, there's another shock for an RC car. This, <laughs> this is just some, uh, this is a four by four that I ground into, into a shape of a, of a heavy flamer. Uh, drilled it out, carved it out. I put a freaking uh, wooden ball in there with a dowel rod attached to it so that uh, it'll move around. The flame tip right here, that is an expended, here, focus, god damn it. Is it gonna focus? There we go. That is the expended tip off of a uh, plasma cutter. Uh, this up here, oh fuck, hold on a second. You gotta, gotta move the camera. My guard tower here, if any of you played G.I. Joe's back in the 80s, that's a G.I. Joe guard tower. I bought it off of eBay for like 15 bucks and then I fucking uh, uh, took a hacksaw to it and hacked the shit out of it and turn it into my little freaking uh, observation tower up there. But that's what we got for freaking details on this model. So now into making a base. Let's uh, roll this camera back out. Let's turn this guy back around. With that big block of wood that's underneath of it, we need a large board that we can set it on, drill it from underneath, drill it to the freaking, to the fucking board and then we can epoxy these feet into place so they're not all floppy. We can route some little hand grippies underneath so you can get underneath the board, pick it up and move it around. I cut two boards already. They're 18 inches long. They're one by 12s. So they're, uh, what, uh, what is that, 11, 11 inches and in change. Is it 11 and a half? Where's my fucking tape measure? Yeah, so it's total width, it's gonna be 22 and a half. We're gonna take it over here to the, uh, the, uh, it's got a fucking thing that spins and it removes wood, not a saw. Joiner, the joiner. Let's spin this thing around and we'll freaking hook up the joiner. All right, now we got two really nicely freaking jointed boards right here. No gap. That fucking joiner over there is like the best purchase I ever made. I used to just pull the clamps in as tight as I could to try and take up for the uh, uh, the distortions in the board where they're, they, you know, they're not fucking true. Uh, put a lot of glue on there and pull the clamps in as fucking tight as you could to try and pull them together to get a nice glue surface. That joiner now, I've got perfect glue surfaces. All right, so I'm gonna glue these things up. Once, uh, well, I'm not gonna put any dowel pins or anything in there. Uh, we'll set this guy on here to where there will be a screw on either side. It'll be sitting in the middle. It'll be good and freaking strong. Actually, what I'll probably do is set it facing this way. That way, uh, when you go to pick it up, you're picking up off of both boards. But I'm gonna glue this thing up and once we get it glued up, then we'll make it into a nice looking freaking base for, uh, for a Gargant. And then once the base is done, you'll know how to make one for years. We'll see you tomorrow. that, you know, that fucking bad at basic math. All right, now we got a big circle. I'm gonna take this over to the bandsaw and uh, see about cutting this thing out quick. 
and uh, then we'll, we'll do some sanding and some routing. All right, we got the half round over done on here. Now we need is a way to be able to pick the thing up. Ah, uh, because it's gonna be real hard to get your fingers underneath here to get it picked up off the table. So I just got this uh, half inch uh, core box. We're just gonna, we're gonna route in a notch where your finger holds are gonna go. Uh, I think we're gonna go, right here is our glue line. So I think we're gonna route right along the glue line and then you're picking up off of, off of both boards. Although you're, you're not gonna, this thing's just not gonna snap in half. That thing's not that goddamn heavy. Uh, yeah, pine's fucking weak. But that glue seam is stronger than the actual pine bind, uh, frickin' fibers anyways. But just out of an abundance of caution, we will go ahead and make sure our pickup points are right here. So when we're picking it up, the weight's being distributed. Science. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Hold on. I'm going to switch out router bits and I'm going to route a groove into this board. So give me a minute. Get her centered up on here. That does not give you much. It's enough to lift up an edge and get your finger up underneath of it. But it's good enough. You can be able to lift up on the edge and slide your hand underneath of it. I may even put, I'm probably gonna put a couple of little uh, feedies on there so it raises it up even even more that way you know it's line of sight you're not gonna have line of sight issues on with a fucking great gargant everything's gonna see it on the table so i'm gonna shut the camera back off and i'm gonna sand which i just got me brand new freaking bosch random orbit sander uh picked it up at nards because uh well, they have that 11% rebate thing that goes on, well, pretty much constantly. And I just spent $1,000 on privacy fence material and put up a new privacy fence out there, which I didn't do a video on because I just wanted to fucking get it done. Didn't want to deal with the goddamn camera. Uh, got my 11% rebate back from the privacy fence thing, 106 bucks. Went in and got this, got a whole bunch of sandpaper, got some other shit. So, awesome. So, now I get to actually take this out for its freaking uh, maiden voyage or test drive or... I, I get a sand with it. Sanding is just exciting. We'll be back shortly. All right, so I'm done sanding. I'm not, I didn't get overly concerned about sanding a great deal. I only sanded up to, went from 80 to 120, and that's gonna be more than sufficient because this is gonna get painted. And it's probably also gonna get a, a heavy coat of, uh, of uh, watered down Elmer's glue, PVA glue. Uh, the whole model will get covered in that before it gets painted. That way it'll hide all the, the wood grain because you don't want a big fucking walking armored tank thingy with a dick cannon to look like it's made out of wood. But, like you said, it's just not quite enough right here. I want it to be raised up. And I dug through my, my desk of freaking uh, disaster over there that is not at all organized. And I don't have any more of the little glue on rubber feety things. What I did have is these foam blocks and they have adhesive tape on one side. I'm not entirely certain what they're for. I think they came with my uh, X-Max Snap-on special edition RC truck that I won in a raffle. You can check out the video where I've messed with it and the link that I won't put below. Just search through all my other videos, you'll find it. Uh, we obviously don't need them to be this freaking tall. Uh, we need to cut them down. Now, I got my little Gerber freaking X-Acto knife thing right here, but the blade ain't big enough. Now, I have a specific knife called an Ulfa knife. It uh, is one of them things that's got a great big long blade. You're only supposed to put one section out, and when it gets dull, you snap it off. And it's like, right here is the blade, and it's just a giant long freaking razor blade. I can't find the goddamn handle for it. But that's what we're going to use to cut this because, you know, safety. 
I started cutting this one. Oh, okay, there's two little feeties. Don't need that no more. That, and then we'll cut him in half. There we go, four feeties. I can put this back in its container. I have to jump on Amazon and order me another Ulfa knife handle. That way, the one that I already own will show up. And it seems to be the way it goes. I can't find something. I look and I look and I look and I look and I look. And it's like, fuck it, I'm buying another one. And as soon as I buy it, it's like, oh yeah, it's right there. It's been on the bench the whole goddamn time. Let's glue these little feet down right here. Where do I want them? We're gonna one feety there. Yeah, now that's a, a lot easier to pick up. Now we have to attach that monstrosity. So I need a drill and a drill bit and some screws. I think a couple of one and a quarter inch freaking screws. Uh, let's see here. Let's set this guy up on here. Center him up, see where we want to set. Yeah, all right. Now, we got to drill into this guy, so I got to... My pencil's over there. Hold on a second. Let's see here if I can mark where the block is. Can I get to it from the front? There we go. All right, drill. Do, 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 do. We don't want to split this guy. We want, actually I want, I want them to slide up through here and just contact there. So I need a little bit bigger drill bit. Yeah, that ought to, that ought to be sufficient. Shit, and I grabbed a dead battery. There we go, second battery. All right, I need, I need, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna run over here real quick and drill a couple of holes. Two holes, drilled. Is that a big enough hole? Yeah. I think we wanna go slightly bigger. There. Get my, my countersink bit set out right here that I've never actually used. Now I can commence to lose them all. Not gonna have a, yeah, that should work right there. Oh, okay, now the fun part. We gotta screw that guy down. So I think the best way, we're gonna go over to my, my uh, little workmate there, open it up, set this on there, and then we can come up from underneath and drill directly into the, the model. Other than getting that foot glued down a little bit better, I now have a relatively stable way to move this guy around the table without risk of snapping the feet off every time. You gotta be a little careful not to drop her, pick her up. So, if you've got a Gargan at home, I wanna see pictures of the base that you made to freaking transport it around. 
that's my base. Now it's going to get painted. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. I probably won't show you what it looks like when it's done. Uh, anyways, that's going to be it for this video. Don't forget, make a base for your Gargant so you can get it off the shelf and actually use it. And subscribe and fucking like button and shit like that. I'll see you next time when I need to make another video that will apply to tens of millions of people like this one did. All right, guys. See you.